Hello, thank you so much for joining me in stream. Uh, just kind of a refresher, this is my third time ever live streaming, so definitely still nervous, but uh, I figure exposure therapy is the best way to go. But anyways, uh, I just want to do this stream right here to kind of introduce to me after so many business attempted failures over the past near two decades, holy crap. Um, I've learned quite a lot of things and one of the things that I've learned is how to set kind of myself up and the three questions to ask myself before I attempt to start any kind of a business or a side hustle for that matter. And those three questions are kind of hinted over here and we're just gonna go really quickly through all of them. And so the first one is what, let's see here. What challenge is being solved? That's really the most important question. And the reason for that is because literally every single dollar that's spent on you or spent by you is spent to solve a challenge. In fact, every dollar that's spent on planet Earth all the time is spent to solve some sort of challenge. And I have a bunch of examples here, and I don't know if we're going to go through all of them, but uh, you can kind of see the list right here. Uh, there's a few that I want to just kind of, I mean, the bottle of water that challenges thirst or healthy hydration, that's obvious. But there are things like a new outfit. You might not feel like that's kind of solving a challenge, but the challenge there is impressing friends or a crush or strangers or anything like that. And similar to like a sports jersey, it's a sense of belonging, being in the in crowd. So quite literally every single penny that's spent, every dollar that's spent is spent to solve some sort of challenge. Even your paycheck, which is listed right there, you are being paid to solve the company or your boss's deliverable challenges, right? And so um, it's one of the uh, kind of most interesting ideas that when it finally got ingrained in my head, finally enabled me to really, really start taking business more seriously and side hustles more seriously to the point where I wasn't just saying I was starting a business, but actually bringing money in. All right. So uh, I want to also tack on that thing about impressing someone and a sense of belonging. It's kind of like a double-sided hack when it comes to challenges. And that really is double-sided because on the one hand, if you were like me in my entire youth and even into adulthood, an overspender, whether we admit it or not, more often than not, uh, our primary motivator is to either impress people or to feel like a sense of belonging. And so this is a double-sided hack because once you start identifying this, um, again, whether or not we like to admit it to ourselves, once we start identifying this as fact, it becomes a lot easier for us to say, wait a minute, before I spend money, am I trying to impress someone? If I am, are they worth my effort to try and impress? And that is something that really helped me stop overspending kind of, wow, 12, 15 years ago now. But on the flip side, now that you know that the power of impressing someone and the sense of belonging as being such strong motivators to spend, uh, and, and the, those are strong challenges that people want to solve, you can also leverage that into how you market and go towards moving towards pushing your side hustle or your business. So that is, is sort of Question number one, what is the challenge that's being solved? And once you clearly know what that challenge is, uh, you're able to identify all of the potential customer groups, right, to be able to empathize with people. What is the challenge that they're facing? What challenges am I going to solve for them? And also, you're going to know the language and tone that you're going to use to communicate effectively with them. After all, how you would sell something to, I don't know, uh, teenagers is different how you would sell to teachers, if that's kind of the two different groups that, that you know, completely different groups that challenges or that face challenges that different types of businesses may want to solve for. And finally, really start defining your value prop proposition succinctly. This is super important because, uh, again, like we may have all of these different ideas swimming in our heads of side hustles that we want to do. But until we're able to really clearly and concisely define the exact challenge and the value that we're going to offer our target customers, uh, we really don't have a springboard to start with. So one recommendation I have in general, by the way, is to always go analog if you can. Writing things down by hand, a lot of people talk about it as like, oh, you know, it's easier to retain information or it's just, you know, really commits things to memory. But for me, the reason why I always go with a notebook pen on paper is because it's just the fastest to be able to draw arrows, to cross things out as you're working towards thinking about the exact challenge that you are going to solve. Cool. So now that we have identified right over here, number the first question, the first important question, the second question is how, whoa, how will you move it? And this is a huge one because one of the biggest myths on earth is if you build it, they will come. This is just simply not true. We see it time and time again where we may have friends who they'll start a clothing brand or they'll start, uh, I don't know, like a YouTube channel or whatever the case might be. If you build it, they will not necessarily come. 
And so there are so many different ways to move it, but starting with uh, the challenge that you're going to solve or identifying the exact challenge that you're going to solve, you'll start to be able to identify, are you a business selling to a business B2B or are you a business selling to consumers B2C? Beyond that, are you doing a service, a product, or are you doing content, right? And so all of these types of things have different ways to move the exact solution that you're trying to sell. So if you're doing a B2B service, outbound sales, that might be a, a very common way. If you're doing a business to consumer product, like maybe you've invented a new pen or a new stylus, right? Maybe social media ads is the way to go. Regardless, one of the most important things to identify is how exactly you plan on moving the solution or the chal- or the solution to the challenge that you're trying to solve. Uh, and so again, you know, we can go back to this slide, but really it's way too easy for people to think, and I was definitely somebody who did this early, early on when I was trying to start all different types of entre- entrepreneurial endeavors. If they build it, they will come. And that just simply was not the case. I really had to understand exactly how I was going to move that, that solution. So I have a bunch of examples here of people I've personally spoken with. And again, I'm probably not going to go through every single one to respect your time. But just right off the tap, there was a frequent flyer who got sick of packing and checked luggages. And so they decided to go with a B2C, a business consumer product of clothing that didn't smell bad, uh, you know, for, for even days or weeks straight of wearing it. And so they, how they moved it is with crowdfunding, content marketing, and paid social ads. We can see over here, uh, a, a good acquaintance, a friend of mine, is a dad who was struggling to make their truck payments. And so they doubled down and they bought a, a plow to attach to the front of their truck. I'm from Toronto. Pretty bad winter storms. And so that is a B2C, a business to consumer service. Uh, now, by the way, they've migrated B2B. But what they did is they bought a plow and they just went printing out flyers, neighborhood flyers and hyper local Facebook groups and said, hey, uh, I'm just going to come to your place and I'll just clear your driveway every single time there's a snowstorm. I'm not going to do all the detailed extra work, but just you let me know. And he would just get people's uh, cell phone numbers and just send out a, bl- a text message blast. And whoever wanted their snow cleared on that particular snowstorm, you just collect that $10 and go from there. And, and it's gotten to the point where now he has a whole fleet of trucks and he's instead of doing driveways, doing plazas for B2B to, to property management companies. Let's see here. This is a good one. Somebody I met, they are a dog lover, but their husband is deathly allergic to dogs. And so uh, what they started doing instead was offering dog walking services. This kind of, you know, two birds with one stone where they got to spend times with dogs that they love, even though they couldn't at home because, again, a really bad allergy on their spouse's part. Uh, And so they got to solve the challenge of people being either lazy or too busy to walk their dogs, spend time with dogs that they loved uh, and earn money at the same time. But now it's gotten to the point where they've, uh, done a complete pivot and, and merged their love of dogs as well as their love of baking. And now they have their own uh, a dog treat line and they go to uh, farmer's markets and they're just about to enter into a pet food uh, chain, which is really, really exciting. And so, but the point is they identify that it's B2B, it's a service, and this is exactly how they were going to move it. By simply going to different apartment complexes nearby and just sticking to the bulletin board, their offer of walking dogs as a service. Uh, and lastly, over here, uh, I know somebody who is a b-boy, a break dancer, who wanted the perfect sneaker. They could never find the perfect shoe, uh, but because they already had a following, they were quite famous in the b-boy uh, subculture, uh, they were able to leverage their own existing audience to start generating interest uh, from there and then prove that there was enough interest for investors to offer a research and development and sample manufacturing and off they are to the races. So again, how exactly are you going to move that solution for the challenge that you're going to solve is something that's really important to understand before you even start your side hustle or your business. Uh, And by the way, if you have limited startup money, like I did, uh, I had so many failed businesses attempts, but the one thing uh, that I would recommend is that it's really expensive to build, uh, like make prototype samples, get inventory. So if you have limited startup money, the first thing I would consider is to go B2B service. So you are a business and you're offering your services to other businesses. Why? Because businesses tend to have deeper pockets than individuals and service because chances are you have a skill that you can think of to solve some kind of challenge for businesses. So as uh, you know, tons of examples, you can 
even if you think you have no skills, you can do, you know, overnight office cleaning, right? That's a service. You're cleaning offices, but you're cleaning it for a business. And because they have deeper pockets, it's kind of easier to go through sales cycles, in my opinion. The second reason why B2B specifically, business to business, uh, is something that I recommend, uh, you know, if you have no startup money is because when it comes to sales, if you're selling to businesses, you know exactly where they are. They literally have a, an address. So you can find phone numbers, email addresses, all this kind of stuff, and do direct sales to decision makers at those businesses. Whereas if you're trying to do B2C, where are you going to go? Facebook groups, maybe. It's, it's just people are a lot more cagey to give personal information, to be receptive to being contacted. So again, I tried so many different things. And the first one that really worked for me was when I did B2B to a business and it was a service because again, I didn't have a ton of money to do a product and do product development and hold inventory and that kind of stuff. Great. So we have the first two questions that we need to answer before starting a side hustle, which is what challenge is being solved and how will you move it? Now, the last one that I think is absolutely vital is what is the first time? Whoa, what is happening? Sorry about that, guys. I don't know what I did here. Ah, yes. What is the first time and financial target? What do I mean that, by this? What is the first time and financial ta target? So one of my favorite quotes is by L. Leonard Bernstein, which is, to achieve great things, you need a plan and not quite enough time. And this kind of mirrors one of my favorite quotes from Tim Ferriss, which is the word someday is the disease that'll take your dreams to the grave with you. And so the reason, and by the way, so what is your first time and financial target? The operative word is being first. The reason is because it's easy and it's lazy to say a million dollars. I want a million dollars. And the challenge with that is it's so daunting and far away where there's no real kind of like measurable checkpoint where we can kind of see the next step to achieve that. And the second thing over here is you want to start with something that's clear, consistent, and concrete, like say a cell phone bill as an example. So here's what I mean. Your very first time and financial target. This is important because asking for money is scary, right? Uh, so we lie to ourselves. Uh, this, I was certainly guilty of this for my first three or four business attempts, lying to myself of being in busyness as opposed to being in business, all the while wondering why there were no results, meaning there's a huge difference between being busy doing things compared to getting things done. I'd focus on logo, business card, like the Facebook page or the Instagram grid, all the while the only thing that really matters when you're trying to start a business is actually getting a point to a point where money is actually coming in. So the singular focus needs to be bringing in the first net positive dollar because until money comes in, you are not a business at all. So my countless failures, again, doing things but not getting things done. And so that whole first time and financial uh, uh, target is setting manageable target and time constraints, which enables you to identify the most impactful individual tasks, identifying the time requirements. This is huge to set future expectations and enables the most rapid learning for your unique solution and the challenge that you're solving, which means you can very clearly predict future earnings by knowing how many individual tasks to convert each sale, identify the weak points to optimize for future conversions, enable the most impactful tasks to outsource once money starts coming in. But I want to revisit this title here, find the formula, then fund the formula. So very candidly, uh, as uh, some of you may know, I have a video agency. Uh, but what you may not know is that that video agency caters primarily to car dealerships. Uh, so I make videos and solve challenges for dealerships that use videos uh, in order to, again, solve dealership challenges. And so uh, uh, oftentimes, people who are freelancers or they're service-based businesses, it's really scary because there's no kind of predictable paycheck, right? Some months might be good, some months might be bad. But what doing this, what finding the formula and funding the formula means is now I know after hitting the pavement, doing cold calls, cold emails, cold outreach, sales cycles, so many, so many times, now I know that the current sales process that I have if I do 20 touches, outbound touches, whether that's a combination of cold calling, cold emailing or warm emailing or in-person visits, any combination of this, 20 touches, I will get a in-person meeting. This is validated after, well, at this point, it's eight years old, eight years in business, but it's validated that 20 touches will get me one in-person meeting. I have a pretty high 
46% closing ratio in an in-person meeting, which means I need to do 60 touches to get three in-person meetings and I will guaranteed get one sale. This is what I mean by finding the formula. My, for my formula is 20 touches to get one in-person meeting and two and a quarter in-person meetings to get one sale. That's the formula and then I have to fund the formula. How can I make this more effective? How can I optimize it? How can I get it so that maybe what I say in cold calls or what I write in cold emails drops that number from 20 down to 15 or 10 touches to get that in-person meeting? This might be going all through the head, but this is just kind of reiterating what I really meant by finding the formula and funding the formula. Cool. So sample, what is it for you? What I recommend you do or what I welcome you to do if you're even interested in starting a business or a side hustle is to do this first time and financial target. So, for example, my side hustle will bring in enough to pay for my cell phone bill every single month within 50 days. So what do you have to do? You have to clearly define the challenge that you will solve. Is it B2B? Is it B2C? Is it product, service or content? Clearly define all the ways that you're going to move it, starting with the lowest hanging fruit, whether it's flyers, whether it's cold calling, whether it's email blasting, whether it's local Facebook groups, doesn't matter. Identifying all the ways that you will move it um, and list out all the individual tasks you need to perform. And most importantly, again, fighting that disease of saying that you're busy doing things without ever getting things done. Every single task should directly support bringing money in, or at least the attempt of. And so we have here the three questions that now, after so many failures, and only recently in the past, less than a decade, starting to see some semblance of success, meaning the businesses that I'm engaged in are now at least net positive in revenue. Uh, these are the three questions that I wish I knew before I ever started any kind of entrepreneurial endeavor. Um, and by the way, scared of selling? Here's the fix. And so sales is such a dirty word oftentimes. Uh, but what I have to say is that this goes all the way back to question one. What is the challenge that's being solved? If you're scared of cold calling, totally get it. I was terrified. But cold emailing should be fine as well, right? It's just an email. But if you're afraid of this and you want to get better, the easiest way for me to fix this fear of sales is to go back to question one. What is, the, what is the challenge that's being solved? When we think of sales as a dirty word, we feel like we're being manipulated or we're manipulating people to spend their money, where if you actually are solving people's challenge, then as long as you're talking to the right person, it doesn't feel sleazy, it doesn't feel bad because you're literally helping them solve their challenge. So it really is a mindset change. And that is the fix to being afraid of selling. Because if you are confident that you can solve a challenge, and you are confident that you found somebody who experiences this challenge, then sales shouldn't feel sleazy at all. It should be feeling like you're helping them solve their challenge. And they, in turn, are helping you by earning a living. Cool. So that uh, basically wraps things up over here. Uh, I want to keep this as short as possible. I don't know how long this has been going for. But uh, I, I think that you, or sorry, I hope rather that you got value from this. And I have been late. If you guys haven't noticed, the sets changed. If you've been with me for a bit, it's because I'm now abroad. Uh, I'm here in Asia for the next five, six months on business. Uh, and so I'm just in this Airbnb now. Uh, and so I have been loafing. I promised a newsletter specifically. So there's, I'm not going to be selling you anything in this. This newsletter is only for people specifically who want to get a little bit deeper dives into uh, my thoughts on entrepreneurship and how to earn money because that's uh, one of the things that I struggled with the most in my life. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to quickly hop over just to see if there's anyone in chat over here because I've just been staring at the camera over here, but whoa, thank you very much everyone who tuned in. Jake says, love your stuff. Uh, hello, Maurice, joining from the Netherlands. It's Frank and I don't actually, you guys might be I'm new microphone, by the way, that I'm testing out. So please let me know. Um, nice. Yeah, Candy talking about true business development. Guys, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, again, terrified of live stream still, but um, this might also be another business uh, or, or side hustle or, or any kind of a... I guess, motivator. For me personally, I'm still terrified of live streaming. You may have seen me stumble, but I'm a firm believer in exposure therapy. So if you're scared of sales or scared of whatever the case might be, uh, I think just like diving in. Worst case, I can just delete this stream if I really royally messed up. But uh, yeah, exposure therapy seems to work pretty well for me personally. I'm not going to say it's going to work well for you, but uh, I hope that I'm going to continue doing these live streams and ideally will get better. And so with that... Um, 
Yeah. Oh, um, Avram asked about uh, the newsletter. Yeah, so in the description of this live stream itself, there's a link. Right now, it's just a Google form. Um, just all, all it is is, is just a, a form to input your email address. And once the newsletter starts, I kind of was hoping it would start at the end of January, but it looks like it's just going to be uh, kind of February is going to be the first edition. And again, this newsletter, I'm never going to like spam you it's going to be maximum twice a month and everything is going to be revolved specifically about lessons the failures and some of the successes that i've experienced in business and the lessons that i took away to hopefully uh, enable others uh, who are interested in side hustles or building business so uh with that oh man i'm being flooded with so many comments thank you all so much uh it really is motivating um but at that Right, right now, by the way, in Taipei, I'm just nearing midnight and I do have an early morning. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, and yeah, I guess I'll see you in the next video or next stream. Take care.